has the same address, but your packets are delivered only to the first AnyCAS address that's the closest or the nearest. And basically the nearest is the nearest AnyCAS address uh, via BGP. So the internet routers that run BGP, the shortest path to the first AnyCAS address, the AnyCAS address with the shortest path BGP wise is where your packets go. So let's say you have file servers and you have 20 of them all over the world. If you're in Asia, your BGP path to the Asian file server is going to be much shorter than your BGP path to the American. So that AnyCAS server is the one you will get. It's an amazing technology. I think it's much more efficient than multicast and I'm very excited by it. Uh, the other thing that AnyCAS does, now remember that nearest but via BGP. Now if you're talking about a private network using an IGP protocol such as OSPF or EIGRP, something like that, then AnyCast, the near so here we're going to talk about the uh, FFFF address. Now these right here start with four Fs, and if you see this, you'll know that this is a special type of IPv6 address because it has an IPv4 address embedded in it. And so we know that IPv4 addresses are 32 bits long, and we know that IPv6 addresses are 128 bits long. So if you want to embed a 32-bit address in this, then the mask here, or the prefix, is 96 bits and 96 plus the embedded 32 bits gives you 128 and there's your IPv6 address the last 32 bits are the host bits now the 2002 address this is for 6 to 4 addressing and 6 to 4 addressing is a type of tunnel where you can connect IPv6 networks to the IP you know through an IPv4 network so let's say you have uh, company A is running all IPv6, company B is running all IPv6. They would connect their sites with a 6 to 4 tunnel and this allows them to put IPv6 encapsulated in an IPv4 number. And so the internet disappears and they can see each other and talk to each other using IPv6 just fine. There's also an FF00. This is the multicast prefix. So if you see FF, multicast. Right off the bat you know it's a multicast address and that's a special address. You have the colon colon slash 96. Again, the zero prefix was used for IPv4 compatible addresses. This is now deprecated. It's been replaced by this colon FFFF. Okay, then we have the 2001 addresses. And uh, this prefix is used in documentation anywhere where an example IPv6 address is given. Addresses from this prefix sh should be used. So this is basically a demo uh, address and this is why my address is used that prefix because it's meant for demos or discussing things that have to do with RFCs uh, and the next thing we have is the FEC0 this is site local this is also deprecated this has been replaced by ULAs and uh, I really like this address. It's really a shame to me that uh, that they've gotten rid of this, but it is deprecated. They have gotten rid of it, and uh, we have to do what we have to do. Uh, the last address here, 2001, is used for Torito tunneling. Torito tunneling is used to connect your network or your computer to a six to four to an IPv6 backbone. There is a large backbone on the internet that is made of experimental IPv6 sites and they're connected using IPv6. You can go to addresses like ipv6.research.microsoft.com, ipv6.google.com. There's plenty of sites. There's actually a whole list now that have IPv6 addresses. And you have to get a service from a tunnel broker. Uh, you can search online on Google for IPv6 tunnel broker. And they're usually free. And they basically allow you to connect to the IPv6 backbone from your house and go to IPv6 only websites. It's very, very cool. There's also IPv6 only BitTorrent trackers, which means that you can circumvent firewalls in colleges and campuses and offices and things like that. And pump all your, your, your BitTorrent traffic through IPv6. It's encapsulated. They can't see it. They can't scan it. They can't block it. And uh, that's always cool. It's also a nightmare if you're a system administrator and it's something you have to combat. But there you go. So that's what Torito tunneling is. I recommend you all experiment with it because it is a way to use IPv6 right now without swapping out equipment or messing around with your production environment. 
So the next thing I want to talk about briefly here is the IPv6 header. Here it is. You'll notice it is quite different from IPv4. It's a lot smaller, first off. Big graphic, but it's a smaller header. You'll notice there are quite a few fields in the IPv4 header that did not make the cut, uh, such as the TTL header, things like that. Uh, but the TTL header was replaced by the uh, hop limit. Hop limit replaces TTL. But there were quite a lot of other headers that didn't make it. This is a basic header. There's a little bit more detailed image, but there you go. Um, and and so you see you got your payload length, your next header, your flow label, uh, traffic class. That's your quality of service bit, your TOS bit. Version version will simply say six because this is IPv6. You have your source address and your destination address, and that is your basic IPv6 header. So. Before we end the video, I wanted to go into it a little bit and uh, talk a little bit about uh, IPv4 embedded addresses. And I thought we'd do some practice here. So here you have the whole address up at the top. And if you haven't guessed yet, the one below it is the same dress, address. And uh, these 2002 notations, uh, they have the last couple bits are an IPv4 address and I thought we'd practice converting with the calculator here and uh, and see what we can do uh, to get, you know to get some practice uh, with becoming comfortable and using IPv6 uh, so let's uh, let's get started here okay I'm gonna give you a couple seconds here to, to look this over with and then we'll pull up the calculator and uh, and we'll get Okay, so let's take a quick look at it. Let's bring up our calculator here, trusty scientific calculator, a Windows calculator. And so we can just skip the top one and go right to the bottom one here. Now this part of the address is your prefix, so we don't have to worry about that. We are looking for an IPv4 embedded address. So <clears throat> let's take a look at it here. These Now each octet is made up of hexadecimal, so we're going to take it two bits at a time from left to right or two digits at a time from left to right and so we have we have CD here let's do this we have CD and CD equals it equals uh, basically you have D what is D in hexadecimal well we have 1 through 9 in hex, and then we have A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, and 13 is D. So we have, we have 1 times 13, is 13, plus 16, because the C here is the second, the C is the second, uh, the second part of it. So if you're familiar with binary, you know it's two to the zero is one, two to the one is whatever, two to the two, two to the three. This is the same thing, except it's just base sixteen. So it's sixteen times C, and we know that C is what is C? C is Well, we know that D was 13, so we put some parentheses here so we can separate these in the proper notation. So we know that uh, if D is 13, then C has to be 12. So there we go. So we're going to get 16 times 12. Sixteen times 